This video covers the steps necessary to program Sodec devices such as the Sodec 1, the Sodec Explorer and the Sodec Autonomo. They all operate in a similar manner and here we will fully demonstrate the entire process. It includes the installation of third-party open source software and assumes that you have no previous experience of the IDE, the Integrated Development Environment, involved. When completed, you should understand how the general settings apply to your particular setup and recognize a correctly functioning system. You should also understand how to upgrade and include additional software, both libraries and code. Code, written for Sodak boards and devices, has to be entered and compiled on a host machine and then uploaded to be executed. The steps in this video are therefore Introduction Download and installing the IDE Describing the IDE and its components, configuring the IDE, and finally, example code compilation and upload. Downloading and installing the IDE. All of the Sodec devices mentioned in our original list use a popular IDE originally developed for the Arduino. It can be found at the home of the Arduino family, arduino.cc. It's a very popular, simple to use and open source package. Clicking on this software link reveals that it has options that run on Windows, Mac and Linux. There is now even a version that works online, but for the moment follow the instructions to download the options for your operating system. The current version is about 90 meg in size and should download fairly quickly. On your way, consider the option of making a contribution to the project, as this helps the cause. Describing the IDE and its components. The IDE starts with this small splash screen and then opens into this main display that is broken down into a number of regions. At the top is this toolbar with buttons for the common functions and a series of drop down menus. These menus tend to be short on a new clean installation but will grow in length with use, so don't worry if your version is not the same as the ones shown here. This area is a text editor used for entering code. As code usually tends to be short and of restricted length, programs tend to be referred to as sketches. Beneath the text editor is the message bar that displays brief details of the operation of the IDE and a progress bar when compiled sketches are uploaded to your board. Further information is shown in this message area that scrolls more detailed information with color-coded error messages as we will see in a moment. Configuring the IDE. With the Arduino IDE downloaded and running, there are now only two steps that need to be taken to prepare it for use with Sodec boards. The two steps are download the board manager and configure a connection to your board. Board managers come from Sodec and to install, click File, Preferences and this window appears. At the base here is a link to additional board managers. Once again, if you have a clean installation, this is probably empty. If you've added other additional boards to the system, then it may already contain details. This file icon opens yet another window that allows further entries to be clearly entered. One board per line. So add this line. The IDE is now aware of the list of Sodec boards, and now we need to add the board. Head for the Tools, Board, Board Managers. Scrolling down the list displays the systems the IDE knows about and here is a link to the latest Sodec details. Once again, clean installations should only display this install option, but because of the history of the use of this installation, I also have remove, and more importantly, this upgrade button that I will use to upgrade. An alternative to scrolling down is just to enter Sodec into this field to filter the responses. The installation may take some minutes, but be patient and click on close to complete this option. With the board details installed in the IDE, we now need to select the particular board. Select Tools and Board. Once again, a clean installation will not have a long list like this. It will grow with use, but select your board. The pull down does close on selection, but to confirm, you can either return and check that this black dot is next to your selection, or check here to see the correct option has been selected. There is one last part of the configuration, and this is possibly the most error prone. It's due to the way in which host systems deal with USB devices. Before connecting any device, go to Tools and Ports. USB devices will appear here. Make a note of the list. Mine here is empty and greyed out. 
Now, plug in your Sodec device into any USB port and note the difference. A new USB device should appear. The USB port specified on your configuration will be based on the individual settings for your machine. Note that no additional power supplies are needed as the supply accompanies the data over the USB connection to the board. One final setting will be the data rate at which the port operates. Clicking on this icon opens a serial connection to the board. This pull-down displays the rates at which the board operates. Select 9600 and ensure that this setting displays both NL and CR, which stands for both New Line and Current Return. These settings hark back to the early days of mechanical terminals. Tapping Carriage Return or Enter on the keyboard may prompt some kind of response from your board. If nothing is seen, unplug, pause and reinsert the board again and press the serial monitor icon again. With your IDE now configured, we can continue to the final stage, compiling and uploading code. Example Code Compilation and Upload Coding is outside the scope of this video, but here we demonstrate the process of entering code, compiling it and then uploading it onto the board. First, we need some example code. GitHub is becoming an increasingly popular method of storing, upgrading, maintaining and distributing code and is well worth studying as a feature all of itself. It's a web-based version control system and in this example, we will visit this address. Do see the accompanying notes below this video for the latest update and any variations on these details. Here is the file structure of the Git. So for the moment, we will select pins IO and blink. Blink is attractive as it is the initial Hello World code first encountered in any Arduino course. The code or sketches have the file extension .ino, so click again to reveal blink.ino. You can reveal the plain sketch by pressing this raw button here, or just return and do a cut and paste of the sketch into the IDE. The IDE has a helpful and colourful environment. The sketch is made up of two sections. One, an initial setup part, and then two, this loop. That, as the name suggests, is the code that is constantly repeated. In fact, to demonstrate this, let's just copy this serial printout line down into the loop. Modify it just to print a dot here, and again to print out a dash. Now to compile and upload. Mousing over these five buttons describe their operation. Verify, upload, new, open and save. Verify, verifies the script. Let's deliberately introduce an error by removing this semicolon at the end of line six. Note the line number is shown down here. Pressing verify causes the green bar to turn amber and the error printed here in this message area. Note here that, as helpful as the IDE is, it's not correctly identified the line with the error in it. And this is often the case. It correctly states that it expects a semicolon before the pin mode command, which is correct. But this is actually back in line six. So let's insert it and verify again. With the correction made, press verify, and the amber turns olive and this horrible message done compiling appears in the bar. Pressing this upload button causes the compilation to rerun as shown here and a progress bar appears here as the code is uploaded onto the board. Praise and plaudits appear down here in the message bar and confirm that everything has gone well. Note the final line CPU reset. This is part of the upload process and places the board into a known state ready to run the sketch. Clicking on this serial monitor reopens the monitor screen and the messages appear. It's not unusual to have the occasional rogue error when opening this monitor a little early, but here it is printing out dots and dashes as it performs the loop and blinks its LED here on the bench. This video has introduced the use of the Arduino IDE for connection to Sodec boards. The IDE has been downloaded and installed. The link to the Sodec board manager has been included and the selection of the board made. A serial debug link has been configured with the correct USB port and serial data rate confirmed. Finally, code has been copied from the GitHub and pasted into the text editor. The code has been compiled and then uploaded to be executed on the board. With these basic operations configured and experienced, the full fat design and development process can now begin.